Hey there, everyone. It is Thursday, June 10, 2021. Hope you're doing well. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So today we turn our focus to the gospel lesson for this upcoming Sunday from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. Uh, it's a parable that in, in some form or another you are familiar with uh, when you hear about this uh, concept of the mustard seed. Uh, so let's jump in again, Matthew or Mark, chapter 4. Verses 26 to 34. And he, Jesus, said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. Again, uh, remember that oftentimes in these parables, the seed represents the word of God, uh, which brings about the kingdom of God. Uh, He, this farmer, sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows, and he knows not how. Uh, So so in other words, Jesus is reminding us that this growth, uh, farmers know this inherently, and and, uh, servants in the kingdom, you and me, who uh, cast the seed of God's word, we understand that the growth doesn't come from us. Ultimately, the growth comes from God himself. And, and trust me, uh, approaching 20 years in ministry, uh, it is proven to me over and over again that you really don't know how or when. You do your best. Uh, you rely on God's grace and, and see him just do amazing things. Jesus continues, the earth produces by itself. Ultimately, God, first the blade, then the ear, than the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, uh, here we're thinking judgment, uh, Christ uh, return again. We talked about that yesterday uh, in 2 Corinthians. Uh, and, and, and this is important, too, to remember that the kingdom of God that we rejoice has come, uh, has an end. It has a goal, right? That's Christ's return, the final judgment. At once, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. And he said, this is Jesus now, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use it? Uh, uh, one other thing to note, to remember, that when we think of kingdom, we, we think of a, a, an inanimate object, a thing. Uh, maybe it's a, a territory, uh, a, a land, a um, land. But, but when we hear kingdom of God, we need to think the active reign of God in the world and in our life. Um, so it's the active reign of God. He says this kingdom of God, it, it's like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown in the ground, it's the smallest of the seeds. Now that's hyperbole. We're not talking, there are seeds smaller, but comparatively speaking, it is very tiny, especially when you consider what results. Uh, verse 32, he says, yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants. Uh the footnotes in my study Bible said that they, this, things can become 10 feet or bigger and, and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. What's the significance of the birds? Well, there's no distinction on the birds. All birds are welcome. Uh, and so this is a message. This is a good news for all peoples of all nations of all times and all lands. Verse 33, Mark continues, with many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. In other words, as God gave them the ability to hear and to understand. Verse 34, he did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. 
Um, basically, it, Jesus isn't hiding anything here. It was people's misperceptions of his day, and, and we see it today, that enables them not to hear and understand Christ. You and I understand that it's the ears, it's the eyes of faith that the Holy Spirit works in us that gives us the ability to hear and to understand even his word today. My, my dear friends, the kingdom of God, this, this active, gracious, forgiving reign of God in our world and in our lives, um, it comes and it works and it grows as God pleases it. And it's dependent on him. We, as his workers, uh, we continue to cast the seed to, to speak uh, that good word of God, to love God and to love our neighbor we rejoice at the growth, uh, but we give God all the glory. Let's continue. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our affliction, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Keep your eyes sharp today, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and see how God is reigning and how God's kingdom is growing in your life and in the world around you, and rejoice. Don't forget to serve him, to continue to cast that seed, to love him and to love your neighbor. And in so doing, wash your hands. Sing the doxology. Remember how the active reign, the kingdom of God, has come into your life and your baptism. And have a great day.